every, every day it's like how you doing spencer and so like another another day in paradise and today's the day the one day of the year where you can say well you know what john today sucks <laughs> yeah today sucks i don't I don't want to sign your birthday I want, card. I don't want to sign your birthday card. No. Oh, oh you're doing a, 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 a pot for the lottery. Yeah. Well, you go take. Uh, oh. You go. <laughs> it's so good that you're not familiar with being cranky. I don't even know how to. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cartier. I am Oscar. Oscar the Grouch. And this here is Frank looking like uh, Oscar the Grouch with his green on. Oscar the Grouch <laughs> oh, was green. Very. I wonder how they made it, the puppet. It... Maybe with fleece. Check out the fleece yeah, podcast. But it, it was, it was, it wasn't ripped, but it it, looked, it did look chewed up and trash canny. Yeah, he was chewed up trash can man. That was Jim Henson, who was fantastic. With... Rest in peace, rest Jim in Henson. Peace. Rest um... in, rest in garbage. Ooh. I shouldn't say that. Garbage can. Yeah, well, I, I know, but I, I meant it in like an endearing, like forever right. Oscar the Grouch. Oh. But rest in garbage doesn't sound nice. <laughs> <laughs> rest in peace. Yeah. Um, <laughs> How you guys doing? It is a beautiful day. October 27th. We are getting right into the cusp of Hollow Weekend. Hollow Weekend is my favorite thing to say. What, what, a, what a flow. Because it's like Hollow Weekend. It's fun. Yeah. Halloween. Halloween. You can't do it Hall- any other time. Hollow Weekend. Right. And also... It is one of the usually, uh, I would say for most people, uh, a packed weekend always. Like yeah. if you're, whether you're a young, or whether you're a kid. and if That's true. It's a holiday for all ages. You're, you're a kid. You're going trick or treat and you're, you're doing stuff. You're a mid person. I'm a mid person. You are doing fun things. Oh, let's go on a Halloween activities. Yeah. Put some pumpkins on our heads. <laughs> And then if you're an adult, you're then taking Put some pumpkin on it. Adult full circle. You're then taking your kids to these. Yeah. A big thing now is the uh, trick or treat out of the back of a car. Trunk or treat. Trunk or treat. I, 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 I'm I against it. Really? I don't understand how you would entice a child to take candy out of a car. It's getting really big now. Well, it's, what you're saying. Just like, today. Like. Just today we can play in the highway. Like, no, we can never take candy out of cars from strangers. No, you're thinking of it in a weird way. Like, you knock on cars. Because I'm windows. a weirdo. I think it really got big during COVID. Yeah, did it? Okay. Um, because uh, and also it's kind of a, realistically, it's getting away from stranger danger. Tr- trick or treat is becoming a little less. Like, yeah, I guess. How naive of me. I let you would let them knock on the door of a house. Yeah. But you wouldn't let them go to the back of an open car. Yeah, I see. which I which is mm. also it is all organized. So mm-hmm. like I know the FOP, which is the Fraternity of Police in uh, Philadelphia, it's where all cops. It's like a, a bar and grill. You you go if you you're a member or anywhere. Or it doesn't have to be Philadelphia. Yeah, ex- exactly. But they're having one, so it's like all the cars are going to their parking lot, and they're all sitting yeah. like sitting chatting with their friends. It's an, it's fun for everyone because then your parents are with all their friends, chatting with their buddies. Right. Little kids are wa- doing the the walk around of the cars. Yeah. So it is what. What. You haven't explained it. All the cars in the parking lot in like a circle. The kids then walk from car that, to car. They, they the front of the car is pulled forward. Pulled forward, and they'll have their their trunk open. All their candy in the trunk. They might just be sitting on their trunk, uh, having a hot cider. Yeah, I don't the, think they'll be sitting on the trunk because. What they do is they decorate the trunks. Okay. So you you probably have a chair next to the trunk, but yeah. you can. So like you said, when it first came out, people were like, "What?" And they would decorate the trunk and just yeah. Halloween decorations. But of course, things evolve. You can now buy uh, on the internet, oh, Oriental Trading Company. Really? You can buy the whole trunk setup. Setup. So it's like I want an Elmo trunk, yeah. and so they'll they'll give you everything you need to, and I you know. Um, I guess it would depend, not so much if what kind of car you had, but yeah, anyway, you can buy the whole setup without doing it yourself, but yeah, so um, I think there's even prizes for the cars, yeah, I mean, I and to give a setup example, I would compare it to like a car show, yeah, where you just have the guy sitting on a lawn chair and someone walks up, like, oh, what's the engine on this thing? Oh, no, it's cool. Horse. I think it's hard, to, it is expensive to decorate your house, or like people want to have, yeah. I, I think it's good for especially young kids mm-hmm. because I think really who it's good for is the parents. One, they, they go to a place that, like, yeah. they, whether it's their church mm-hmm. or you know, their FOP, and it's a shorter walk, 
you feel yeah, more it's really popular. I, I've seen. I don't need to do it, um, but I've seen you know ads for it or whatever. And and the and the places the spaces go. Yeah. So like, they, say they only have space for thirty cars. Uh, if you didn't sign up fast enough, you yeah. you can't be in the tr- you you can go to the trunk or treat where yeah. you get the candy, but you can't um you can't park your car. And, and as a parent, especially now, you know, back in the day when everything, the golden years, you just send your kid out and then come back with a bag of candy. There's a certain stress I feel like of a bad Halloween of like all the houses were dark. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, we didn't get any candy. Our it's houses random, are yeah. are too spaced apart. Oh, you know, all these people are on board of. What, you are yeah. going to a place where you're guaranteed. To get all the candy, feel like you have your bag, you have your costume. Everyone's on board. There's not one dark house. There's there's not miles of walking. As a parent, you're not having to walk miles just to get your kid enough candy to make him smile. Him or her smile. And it, it's a good holiday. Uh, not a good, you know, a super popular holiday. Because not many holidays uh, do you bring it to work with you. And Halloween you do. It, even if you go to a hospital... The, the you see somebody with like a Dr. Seuss hat on or you'll see them with yeah you know um whatever you know what I'm saying like dare I say it might be one of the best social holidays yeah and what I mean by that because someone want to argue social holidays so what are some big ones Thanksgiving Chris well Thanksgiving's too, family yeah what was what were you about to say I was gonna say Christmas I'm glad you brought it up that's my favorite holiday mm-hmm. it is a religious holiday yeah even if it, if it transcended that yeah it's not even some places would be politically correct. You're not supposed to say Merry Christmas. It's Happy Holiday. Like it, it's not everyone's dressed up as Santa yeah, to yeah, the yeah, workplace. Yeah. Halloween. It's everyone celebrating Halloween. It's not a oh enjoy your time with your family. It's you go to work and it's we're having Halloween. You're at school. We're having Halloween. Right. Like, wherever you are, the people you're with is who you're sharing Halloween with. Right. It's a social holiday. It's also the devil's holiday. Yeah. Yeah. Some people. Um. I'm Just watching kidding. Great British Baking Show from england but you can watch it on netflix here but they're just they're every week you don't it's what you can't you can't binge it yet because it's season 10 you have to watch every friday yeah. they'll release so last friday was the halloween um episode and um the one baker he he was like well i'm christian so I, we were never allowed yeah. to he, he was they were allowed but like they had he said he was um i can't even remember it was something they were like bi- not biblical. They were like literary characters. Uh, or, you couldn't um, be a ghost or a ghoul or yeah, a goblin. Yeah, you couldn't be anything like a devil or yeah. a witch. But they could do it. So, so you could be someone real. Like, like, yeah. We're not playing fantasy land here. You want to be <laughs> Albert Einstein? You can be yeah. Albert Einstein. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So I mean, I think we're celebrating at my school. Uh, th- we're going to dress up tomorrow. We're having like a Halloween parade. Did they give any rules? Like I remember when when um my kids were in school, we would get a letter. It was like no scary masks and. Oh, I don't know. No, no, they too, didn't. Probably too young. I mean, like you have to like. I guess. No, I mean for you guys, like to not, you know, you know, there's 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 teachers being, uh, were they arrested, charged for what? For scaring the little ones with the oh really mask yeah. You kind of been arrested. Uh, I don't know harassment. They're, they're literally charge yeah i don't know what happened to them because i kind of didn't even want to because i don't like people scaring little children so yeah. i didn't even want to read the article but it's it's very it's it's the top headlines right now that there was a daycare or a little school or something and they were sneaking up on the kids and it was like uh, the scream yeah. mask or something and the kids were and you don't expect if you send your baby to school play, that they're gonna that get gonna terrified happen. so yeah so i have my um thing all my coworkers are gonna dress up but you know maybe i don't want to dress up why? Maybe I don't really care about tomorrow. What is going on? Maybe I'm feeling a little cranky. Oh, right, right, right. Because <laughs> you know what I'm I'm feeling? Like a cranky coworker. And you know how I'm going to celebrate that day? How? By not trying to cheer you up. Yeah. That's what it said. I'm a cranky coworker and, and don't say anything about it because today's National Cranky Coworker Day. All right? A lot of times it's... Oh, I forgot. I was getting so cheerful. I w- That's why I was Oscar. I yeah. was supposed to be cranky the whole time. Yeah. I forgot. Yeah, we're, I'm feeling like a grouch today, and that's okay. I'm a terrible actress. You know, some people are at work just to make a dollar for with their real passion. Their passion might not be bricklaying. So yeah, I'm gonna be a little cranky. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My my back hurts. Yeah. My 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 toes hurt, and my head hurts. And I don't need to talk to you, Marianne and HR. Right. 
I'm going to be cranky today. Right. Or even like, you know, money's hard. So money's hard. Money's tight. So money's tight. You might be talking to someone who is working for money they already spent. Or, oh. Yeah. So that doesn't make for a happy coworker. Doesn't make for a happy coworker. Um, I saw this thing. And it's okay to have emotions that aren't always good. You know, yeah. sometimes you're pressured to be like, oh, I'm the cranky coworker. Well, today's the day that it's like, yeah, I'm the cranky coworker. Maybe you're the too happy go lucky coworker. Yeah. Um, I saw this thing and it said, oh, like if you think someone's giving you a hard time, like, oh, they're giving me a hard time. And it's like they could be going through a hard time. Yeah. So it's not about you. It's that. They're overwhelmed. Yes. Yeah, it's work. It's like, it's great to love what you do. It's great to be happy at work, but you don't know what someone's going through. You know, like, like you said, uh, they might've made money they already spent or then that might be their second job yeah. and they're paying off hospital bills or they could have money, but they're just not feeling that happy that day. Well, and so the idea I think is, is to not force people to feel some type of way just because you are are both in the same well, situation. It's only one day. It's only one. Oh, the rest. October 27th. 27th. Yeah. No, every other day it's the, cheer up, buttercup. Yeah. Cooperate. Yeah. Figure it's like the purge. Well, yeah. But for crankiness. Yeah. So it's we because we've always said that like you got to make an effort. You're out there. Uh, yeah. And, you know. uh, yeah. No, you have to make an effort. But so it's your one day to eat candy. Halloween is the one day to <clears throat> go to cars and yeah. get candy. Every Every day it's like. How are you doing, Spencer? And so another another day in paradise. And today's the day, the one day of the year where you can say, "Well, you know what, John? Today sucks." <laughs> yeah. Today sucks. I don't. I don't want to sign your birthday I want, card. <laughs> I don't want to sign your birthday card. No. Oh, oh, you're doing a a, a a pot for the lottery. Yeah. Well, you go take. Uh, oh. You go. <laughs> It's so good that you're not familiar with being cranky. I don't even know how to. <laughs> it's, I was like, I was, I was about to, I was, in my anger, I was about to say, you go take this dollar. And and so I was still giving yeah, the dollar yeah. in the situation. A cranky is not exactly like aggressive or it's cranky is just like you're cr- like a child. It gets cranky. You must deal with cranky children yeah. who didn't sleep correctly or uh, just they just can't get it together to yeah. <laughs> yeah. cooperate. It's like, oh, excited for Halloween. It's like, now what's there to be excited for? Right. So I don't care. I don't have kids. I don't have a party to go to. Yeah. Well, you're depressed. Cranky is... I don't know. What's cranky? <laughs> cranky is cranky. Cranky is like, like you just woke up. It's a little... Uh, yeah, like you don't... Uh, mm-mm. Mm-mm. Like that? Okay. If your coworker did that, he... No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> like they're trying to like feed you or something. That what? Like, hey, you like... They're here. trying to feed you? Like, oh, I got you a sandwich. Mm-mm. I don't want it. I guess I can't. It's not really reading as adult cranky, but <laughs> I only work with kids. So that's why. That's why I think a lot with cranky is they won't eat their food. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, that's that's as much as I can be cranky. I'm not that good at it, as you guys can tell. I am here for Happy Go Lucky Day, which is every day. Mm-hmm. I'm also here for uh, Thursdays. Okay. Um, because on Thursdays we have a little something special called Walk Through Thursday. Roll the intro, please. Or don't. I don't care. I'm cranky. Welcome back. Hope you're having fun. Cuz walk through Wednesday just begun. What's going on, guys? It is walk through Thursday, the best time of the week, of the year, of the millennium. Um, millennia or millennium? I don't know. What we do on walk through Thursday is we open up the Bible. Um, once the Bible is open... We pick a Bible verse out of the many 60, what, three, 60, 63 books of the, the Bible that we read. Can't remember. Um, pick one book, one verse out of said book, and we walk through it. Uh, we we try to get every ounce of yeah. value from it because although we love the value for the overarching themes, we think it is uh, an entire book that can be condensed into one way of living. And, you know, we, we uh, advocate that. But today, right. today's a day to show the value of each part. And to just hit back for our original instructions way, way, way back. This is what we're getting out of it. It's what we're getting out of it. Yeah. We don't want to go to someone else and say, can you tell me what this means? Mm. And so therefore, we don't want to tell other people what it means. This is what we're getting out of it. And time out. TTT, time out. Um, 
Taste Another thing about break. it is we, we do like to mention that our belief is that the Bible is a living word. Right. And so what we get out of it today might not be what you get out of it today. Doesn't mean you're right or we're right. It's what we're meant to get right now. Right. You're meant to get right now. We go we hearken back to it in a year. We might get something totally different. Yeah. And that's what we were meant to hear today. It's what's so special about the Bible. It's why you can always go back to it and you can use it as a resource. So today is just an example of that. Right. So come with us and uh, join the party because today we're reading out of the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah, we haven't read out of this book before. Old Testament uh, starts with M, ends with Nehemiah. <laughs> um, we're going to have fun, fun with it. Uh, so I say me, but don't go by me because all of the words that I say in the Bible is my own... I made them up. Nee. But it's N-E-H. I say Nehemiah, but, N- but you're probably right because Jeremiah is a short... I feel like for it to be Nee, it would need to be N-E-H-E, but then it would be Nehemiah. So the in E, like Jeremiah has an E-M-I-A-H. Nehemiah. So yeah, Nehemiah, I guess. Yeah. Nehemiah. I, 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 any way you want. Tomato, tomatoes. That's the whole point of Walk Through Thursday. We say it differently, but it's still the same book. Right. Um, we're reading ne- Nehemiah... 2 11 to 12 two verses here don't get mad at us 11 is pretty short chapter 12 so the title I mean, chapter two in, uh, the new verses inter- 11 in and the 12 new international version they'll give you a little summary um of just what you're like and so this okay. is nehemiah inspects jerusalem's walls mm-hmm. so he's out there he's inspecting jerusalem's walls right went to jerusalem and after staying there three days set out during the night with a few others I had not told anyone what my God had put in my heart to do for Jerusalem. There was there were no mounts with me except the one I was riding on. Okay. Okay. Anything you want to add to that? Sure. Um, a mount is a horse. Just... Mount is a horse. Uh, not a mule. Not a mule. Don't be confused. Maybe. I don't know. I thought it was a horse. Um, okay. So last week we read Ezra. We did. And um, the the books of Ezra and Nehemiah used to be combined, oh, and so it Ezra was Ezra and Maya. No, like I don't know, but it used to be combined, so they go like hand in hand, hand in hand. So it's it's this in this um this is the second time in um Nehemiah it's the second time we see uh King Artaxerxes. Ah, oh, we know him because he's the one who told he like financed the trip for, for Ezra. Ezra, yeah, okay, um and. So King Artaxerxes, you think like, well, why are we hearing about this guy? Or, you know, he's not the, he's not like the spiritual character of the story. He is the political character of the story. So um, people also look to it as the earliest examples of um, church and state. Oh, okay. And um, good. And good covenant king. Good, um, good non-covenant kings. Okay. So King Artaxerxes wasn't. Remember, he was like about Ezra's he, God. He wasn't like King Herod. Yeah. Where it's like he's a, both an earthly uh, earthly king and a bad king. This is like, yeah, he's he's an earthly political leader. He's also not. not he's good without being Jewish. Saint, yeah. <laughs> like, that's what, you know what I'm saying? Like when he said to Ezra, which we're not on Ezra, but it's Nehemiah. Nehemiah. When he said to Ezra, I will finance you and I will send a letter for you. He didn't say, I will also convert to your religion. Yeah. So it is. It is like um, this, this, this uh, relationship okay. without you being, you know, it's like, oh, we all have to be the same. We don't because yeah. King Artaxerxes is a good example of. Not all the good people in the Bible were the same religious right. people. It's there, there's good and bad are deeper than just which tribe you're, we're in. Right. So um, the reason that we're looking at this, these two particular um these two particular verses for Nehemiah. So uh, Ezra had to go into the town, right? And remember, if we remember from last week, or you can look in the playlist that he was worried and he wanted reassurance and he he got a little nervous, lots of people with him that they were like talking and they had letters and they had money and everything. And this is so different because this is the uh, Nehemiah is saying that uh, he sat with a few others. Yeah. But even the few others, he didn't tell them, it wasn't like, let's all go. Like yeah. Ezra was very much like, we're going to go in bands of people. This will be like so protective. Um, Ezra, I'm sorry, Nehemiah uh, went in the night without telling anybody. And he was like inspecting the, the walls of Jerusalem. So um, 
that was why I thought it was interesting because it's they're supposedly these two books go together. It's kind of like the same story, sort of, but the, they're so different. Ne- Nehemiah is is acting so differently than how Ezra acted. Yeah. Um, well, one, I mean, I think they were doing two different things, right? Like, I think this had less um, consequence. I don't he was know. Just inspecting those. I own. probably knew at the time, but I went to Jerusalem after. Oh no, yeah, I mean, like, who knows? But mm-hmm. um. No, he was, it was kind of the same story, which you can't see from just seeing these two verses. Um, but Jerusalem is the halfway point, just like Ezra was at a, as, at a halfway point. Yeah. And then Ezra was like, ah, I need more things to go. He's at that same point, not the same point, but you know. Yeah. Um, I, had, I had not told anyone. It looks like Ezra told everyone. Yeah. So I, I think just with this, you know, it's a ne- never let him know your next move. Um, but also, I think there's a, a, I wish I knew more of the story, but, um, sorry, uh, it's, you know, Nehemiah inspects Jerusalem's walls. So God had put it in his heart to do for Jerusalem. There's a sense of like, because, you know, Jerusalem was, you know, God's town, right? That's like yeah. what they built for God. And, um, everything was sort of like block by block had to be correct for God. And so there's this sense of like, sort of in a way like this, this um this oversight over its own thing, yeah. and like, you know, sometimes uh, like you're not meant to bring too many people in it because then it's like, there's this defensiveness, and there's this like why people try to like oh why what do you not trust our our walls are correct and stuff, and it's like this is between me and God like right. uh, I'm doing my my own mission right now, and I think in life we have a lot of of that that we have our own missions to do. And as much as we, you know, we like to have the earthly, eh, you know, like when um someone tells you a rumor and you want to tell someone just to get it off of your chest. Yeah. Of like, I think it's, it's, there's sort of the same thing like spiritually or like just something that is in our heart to do. We're like, I just want to tell someone else, but then that person can talk you out of it. That, that person can uh, tell you, Oh, you don't know what you're thinking. Oh, yeah. God told you to check the walls. Yeah, I like that because I just told you like the history, like as if, as if we were trying to learn about the history of a battle or people yeah. in it or or geography. But yeah, if you're right, if you read it just for um, which well, you would read the Bible because we are not invading anybody and we're not <laughs> we have if you just read it for your own life, um, that would really work there. Yeah, that I that. Do you have to tell everybody what you're doing, or do you need all this reassurance, or do you need accompaniment, or? Yeah, and uh, and um, so like once again, it's like, it's Jerusalem. It's his, it's his own, he is a he's a, a religious man, and there's also this sense of like, in our own spiritual journeys, we we have our our put ourselves in groups of people or or churches even, and let's let's use churches as an example because. Um, the church is a good thing. It's a community and stuff, but, uh, not all churches are good. And I don't, I don't mean what they're teaching. I mean, human, but the humans inside them yeah. are doing the wrong thing. And is this sort of not like uh, Nehemiah inspects Jerusalem's walls? Like it's, you're not being, you're not being like coming at the place is beliefs or, or 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 God challenging God, but you're challenging the walls of Jerusalem. You're, you're challenge like you're challenging this, and I think like it's important to do this with our own churches and stuff, and to go out and not tell. And if you tell anyone that you don't trust a church or or, right. or you think they're doing something wrong, you're not saying you don't believe in God or you're losing faith. It's and if you tell them that, that's how they'll spin it. They'll right. say, "Oh, you're you coming at our church, but it's between you and God." Like. The whole point of Jer- the whole point of Jerusalem was God, right? For the symbolism of God, yeah. That, even that's that's why it was, and and why we can still read it today when we have no worries about the geography of that, it. That's why it was built, right? So like, once you have this relationship with God, the the Jerusalem isn't God. Right. Jerusalem was just this representation. So he's looking at the earthly parts of it, right? And, and inspecting the walls, making sure that they, it was being up kept up right, right. And I think we need to do that a lot in our same life like where it's like anything we do spiritually has to do with God. Right. It's all the earthly things that come spiritually. We should 
inspect them and and, and right. make sure you should yeah individually individually without yeah. without going around bashing right. and saying Jerusalem's bad it's we're like, looking for help yeah outside yeah so Ezra looked for help he looked for so much help that he looked for help even once he started the journey yeah this this um these verses we can look at as it's between us and God mm-hmm. God put it in our hearts. And he's he, the only uh, mount he has, is a donkey or a mule or a horse, whatever, is the one he's riding on. It's all individual. It's yeah. all between me. Now, is he alone out there in the dark? I also think that the night is, it, I feel a symbolism towards the night. Why what did he the, sit out in the night and not the day? Well, us staying there three days for all you numerology Bible lovers. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I just think it's the um, the getting ready, which, which Ezra sort of did too. Remember, he... He wanted to ask for more help yeah. from um, from the king, but <clears throat> didn't they fast and pray? I don't, I don't know if it was three days, but so this both of them are getting their um, thoughts together, their feelings together, their courage together. Um, but Nehemiah, he he acts very courageous, but he also acts very smart. He goes out at night, you know, because you don't want to be Don Quixote and let, like you just said, let everyone know what you're doing yeah. and just open yourself up to you know, a uh, discouragement or whatever. Yeah. So it's like, I find going out in the night, that's even, that's again, it's like, it's let me have this, Yeah. you know, journey me and I'm doing it because God put it in my heart. Yeah. I, I think, you know, it's sort of like, you know, come to an end. There's also this sort of sense of like sometimes, and, and I think a lot of um, Christians might fall victim to the, everyone. I mean, every person, uh, there's a sense of like with religion and in a lot of situations this is true wear it on your chest yeah never back down be loud and, and right. boastful stand say get a megaphone and say there's there's a and so that's good for a lot of things in, in following god and going down the path you're meant to right but not everything is meant to be done that way no like and, and a lot of things are the only people that will ever know it was done is you and God. Right. A, a lot of uh, the things that you set out on that you think has been a door opened by you. Yeah. Is only meant to be known by you. Right. You and God. And, and that's sort of the beauty in, in the relationship, right? Yeah. Like if you need other people to see it, it kind of also shows a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a lack of faith of like, okay, well, yeah, God's all, but I want someone to say it. Like right. I, I want, and it's like, but someone did, God, right. God's the one to put you on that mission. It's like, right. yeah, but I want someone to see it. It's, it's, there's this pure belief that nobody ever know, needs to know I did this good deed because someone saw it. And that one person is a person who right. put it in my heart to do that good right. deed. And whatever it is, whether it be inspecting walls, whatever symbolism you want to use for that, or just in any daily pathway that you think you know, maybe God put you on and, and it's not meant to be, even if you're excited about it or nervous about it or unsure about it. Some things are, are meant to be between you and God. Yeah. And, um, and, and, and you know, you never hear um, anybody saying that you don't have to go to church uh, if they're quoting the Bible. But yeah. I find that this is from the Bible and it is it is an important mission that Nehemiah is on. Uh, God had put it in his heart and yet he did it alone. He mm-hmm. didn't do it with anyone else. He God gave him the transport to do it and he went under cover of the night and he did it himself and the way we started walk through Thursday, you can read the Bible and, and um, interpret it for yourself. And your relationship with God is always by yourself. Uh, church gets people confused because then you start to go back, lean back on, can you tell me what this meant? Can you tell me what this meant? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, just like Jerusalem's walls, you know, it, it's, it will never be like, It'll never be God. You, a lot of things in life we can use as as communities or, or things that will, if you have any kind of physical items and buildings are physical items, they can help you focus your, your mind. But when it all comes down to it, there's the, the, we all have an individual path through God that nobody else right. can get between. And that's why we can both read this Bible verse and you get something different than me. And it you came after Ezra, uh, Nehemiah does come after it, I believe, unless I'm wrong. But wouldn't that be interesting if Ezra comes first in the Bible and Nehemiah comes second? Because it's like, 
Never known my next sometimes, move. Sometimes you're, you're not ready to be alone. Yeah. But there should come a time that you could be alone. Yeah, and that's all part of it, you know? Put a part of it. All right, guys, that is our podcast. Uh, see us tomorrow for Dr. Seuss Friday. It's going to be a good one. It's going to be A1. Um, until then, go out uh, in the cover of night and <laughs> do <laughs> inspect your walls. Peace. Peace.